Um, there are some witnesses being quoted as well by Reuters this morning saying that they were injured in a stampede at Parsons Green Underground Station uh, immediately after this incident. Let's talk to uh, our Home Affairs correspondent, Mark White, who's on the phone. Very early days, obviously, Mark, in this, but what are you hearing? Uh, there is, as you would expect, a full emergency service response to this. That includes armed police officers, counter-terror command, uh, at Scotland Yard is aware of this incident, but it's too early at the moment to uh, confirm whether it is anything suspicious that uh, could lead them to believe that it might be terror-related. Uh, what we know, of course, is that uh, this explosion did happen in uh, uh, the carriage of a district line train at uh, Parsons Green Station in West London. Uh, now, what we're told is it was a small explosion um, and there are reports of injuries. Now, I know that you've been reporting people with burns on their faces. I haven't heard that information. Um, certainly, there are reports of people that have been injured uh, because of the understandable panic within that carriage and the haste to evacuate that train carriage and the station. Uh, it may well be that there are people who have suffered uh, some kind of burns, who have suffered uh, some kind of burns uh, with regard to this. There are some... Uh, pictures that are circulating on social media that does uh, show a, a, a small uh, bag uh, at the uh, side of a seat within the carriage that appears uh, to be the centre of this explosion. And it does look as though it may have been uh, a fairly uh, minor explosion. But, uh, of course, we just simply don't know whether uh, it was something more sinister in nature, where it was part uh, of a charge that didn't fully uh, ignite, uh, that will become clear in the hours ahead. I mean, what I would say uh, with regard to a, a sort of a caveat uh, in, in terms of e explosions and uh, alerts is that uh, last week at Euston Station, I was just outside there, uh, when uh, hundreds, thousands of passengers were evacuated and their trains cancelled because of a security alert at that station. That turned out to be uh, a small explosion caused by a knee cigarette which malfunctioned. Uh, as I say, it's just too early to say really at this stage uh, whether it uh, was accidental in nature or more sinister in nature. But as you would uh, imagine, uh, the protocols are in place given that we are currently uh, in a, 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 serious, a severe terror threat mode in this country, having uh, sustained three terrorist attacks in quick succession uh, a couple of months back, the, the last of those, of course, being uh, at London Bridge. Uh, just yesterday, of course, we got those figures through talking about uh, terrorist arrests and the warning from both the security minister and uh, the national lead on counterterrorism policing that uh, that severe terror threat is likely to remain for some time. Uh, as I say, at this stage, though, you can see from the map up there uh, that Parsons Green Station is on the district line heading down towards uh, Wimbledon. Uh, it's a fairly busy station, certainly at this time in the morning with uh, the morning commute there. Uh, there are bomb disposal teams from Scotland Yard who are on scene uh, examining uh, the, the seat of this uh, small explosion within the carriage. Uh, as I say, Counterterrorism Command, Stephen, are uh, aware of this at this stage, but they're not at the position where they can declare this uh, as being one thing or the other. It's still very early on. Uh, the detail that we can now share with our viewers, uh, and that this is coming to us via the London Ambulance Service, is that they received the first call at 8.20 a.m. There were reports of an incident at Parsons Green Underground Station uh, the London Ambulance Service confirming that they have sent multiple resources to the scene, including single responders in cars, ambulance crews, incident response officers, and hazardous area response team. And our first medics are arriving in under five minutes. So this was a release sent out uh, uh, about eight minutes or so ago. So uh, we would now believe that medics have also reached the spot. Uh, our initial priority, they say, is to assess the level and nature of injuries. More information will follow when we have it. So you have London Ambulance uh, Service, London Fire Brigade, London Police, all of them sharing 
uh, basic information, essentially asking people to stay away from that area and to avoid that district line altogether because there's been, quote unquote, an incident. Uh, people have been advised to use a different, a different route if they are heading out this Friday morning to work. Uh, Rishab Gulati back on the phone line with us. Rishab, any further details available? Yeah, the information that is coming right now is uh, that uh, uh, that uh, there, there is being a treatment which is being done in of the people that were immediately standing inside this carriage around this small black bag uh, that has 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 exploded. Uh, so it seems uh, that it is being restricted down to a minor explosion. Uh, the entire, as you can see from the photographs on your screen, the carriage. Uh, itself doesn't seem to have been damaged, but you can tell on the extreme right mm -hmm. of the screen that mm -hmm. itself is is the is the location where the blast has taken place. Uh, so you can tell from there that this is uh, not a massive damage to the carriage; it's just the ferocity of the blast itself that has caused minor injuries. You can see uh, one of the passengers of the carriage there on your screen on the extreme right. On the extreme left of your screen, that is what the NHS has come out in terms of a press release. They say that the, uh, that the incident took place at 8.20 a.m. in which NHS ambulances services uh, were deployed, uh, including teams uh, that deal with hazardous material. Yes. Uh, remember, there have been experiences in the past, including in the, in the Japanese uh, underground service, uh, where poison gas like Farin uh, was used in a terror attack. So everything can't be ruled out at this stage, uh, certainly Ananya, but uh, the, the scale of, of the explosion uh, right now seems to be limited. The scale of the explosion is limited because it seems there was some explosive inside that black bag that Rishabh is pointing out. Uh, you can see that on your screens inside a coach of the London Metro. Uh, that explosion took place uh, before 8.20 in the morning because the London Ambulance Service is now confirming that they received the first call at 8.20 in the morning and they immediately dispatched their teams including single respondent cars. So whatever resources they had at their disposal, they dispatched to the spot immediately. Medics have now reached the spot as well. On the left of your screen, pictures that have been taken on a mobile phone of the ambulances uh, uh, as well as the fire brigade rushing to the Parsons Green Station. Uh, there, there is some bit of panic, understandably, because the number of attacks, the number of terrorist attacks that London has seen over the past few months or so, including uh, cases where cars have simply run over pedestrians uh, in London. We've seen attacks very recently in Spain. We've seen attacks in France as well. So clearly, Europe, not just London and the UK, but Europe on the edge because of the number of attacks. At this moment, of course, no one is calling it a terrorist incident. Uh, the uh, police referring it to just an incident, uh, not sharing any further information, simply because they say we are waiting for more accurate information that we can share with people. Uh, uh, Rishabh, if you, are, if you are there with us, just take us through uh, what we know about the respondents at the moment, the fire brigade, the ambulance, all on the spot. Emerging, seems to be emerging as the picture gets clearer that a large number of injuries that have taken place uh, were, in the, were due to a stampede that occurred at the station immediately following the explosion. Uh, several people who were there at the station or, or near the train are coming, coming out and speaking, uh, are getting online, and they've been pointing out that the injuries that have t t took place were there was a stampede of passengers, and one can imagine uh, that a very crowded station and at a very crowded uh, point of time, uh, even a small incident can cause a bit of panic. Uh, so it seems that there were some injuries due to the explosion itself. There have been facial burns that have been reported uh, in the British press, uh, and uh, a lot of people are reporting that other injuries have taken place principally because uh, of the stampede that followed immediately after this. So it seems uh, that while the, sca the, the scale of the explosion itself, as is aware from this uh, photograph that you're watching on the right side of your screen, that seems to be the spot uh, where there is a damaged bag which seems to have burst, uh, that while the scale of the explosion itself seems to be rather minor, and we're waiting for an official police version on this, Ananya, uh, that there were certain injuries at the, at, at during the explosion which are being classified as certain burn injuries, facial injuries, that have taken place, uh, but several other people could also have been injured uh, when, uh, there, when there was a panic uh, to exit the train and, of course, to exit the station. Uh, thankfully, of course, this was not an underground station. This was an overground station, uh, so people were able to leave the train uh, in a more expeditious manner, Ananya. But we're waiting for the London Metropolitan Police uh, to make an official statement on this. Right now, they're only referring to this, ma this as an incident uh, on the line. They're not referring to this as, as a blast at this point of time. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, Rishabh, uh, there's one picture online of this uh, 
bag that we are referring to, uh, if we can show that uh, on, on our screens as well, the bag, the picture of the bag which, in which the explosive was apparently kept, uh, this picture is a closer uh, picture, close up of that bag itself. It looks like there are some wires sticking out. Yes, that's the one on the right of your screens. Some wires now sticking out of that bag. Uh, there's a bucket, a white bucket. Uh, uh, there, there are, there's some black material on it. And then there are wires that are sticking out uh, of that black bucket, uh, the, the, the white bucket uh, as well. Wires that clearly look like electrical wires uh, or, or have little lights uh, attached to them as well. So that's, uh, that's a picture that's being tweeted out online uh, even as we see. That, that's a close-up picture of that bag uh, that is said to have uh, had that explosive in the first case. Uh, but uh, as Bishop is pointing out, most of the injuries that are now being reported are injuries due to the stampede that followed because people panicked when this explosion took place. The explosion in itself may not have been something that was uh, very powerful, but yes, there have been injuries, including uh, facial injuries to people who were uh, in that coach on that train and were possibly heading to work early uh, on a Friday morning. Uh, just to point out uh, to our viewers that this is an explosion that's taken place on the Parsons Green Station. As Bishop is pointing out, it's a, not an underground station. This one, at least, is an overground one. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, a, a quick uh, alert as well being issued by TFL Travel Alerts in London that services are now suspended between Edgware Road and Wimbledon while police respond to uh, an incident. Tickets are accepted on buses. Southwestern and overground. So essentially encouraging Londoners this morning to avoid the underground altogether because of this incident. But no further details available. All the pictures are now uh, being shared on social media uh, uh, of uh, the moments after the attack of people who are being attended to by medics and of uh, the security personnel now who have rushed to the spot uh, as well. We were speaking to a London resident a few minutes ago he was pointing out that this is an incident that's happened in the southwestern part of London. Uh, police are on the scene, uh, and uh, uh, he's been talking to friends who were taking the tube early uh, on a Friday morning uh, who've said that they've heard of injuries after the explosion at the London tube uh, uh, station. In fact, uh, Jyoti Bhattacharya is back uh, with us uh, on the phone line fr from London. Uh, Jyoti, uh, any further details that you can share with us as you sit in London and you, you get information from your friends uh, across the city? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I, I spoke with a few of my friends. Uh, there's a friend of mine who, uh, whose office is uh, right on, uh, in Hammersmith, which is pretty close to the, the site. And, and she was saying there's a lot of panic around. People are running around. And, um, and nobody knows uh, what, what actually happened. They all, all they have heard is that uh, um, uh, there's some, some explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, some, uh, some explosion. And uh, people are uh, just in a panic mode. So, so, so that's the update that I have for my friend. Uh, yeah, your friend is around this area or is, is near any of the underground stations? Yes, uh, she was traveling. She was traveling from uh, from, from Watford to uh, to Hammersmith. Uh, it, it was somewhere area, but but uh, but people are in a very panic mode right now in the in that area, especially when the, when all the, the the train services have been disrupted, and uh, you know people are going with the uh, with the alternate route to uh, to go to their destination. It's a, it's a busy morning today, even though it's a Friday, but London is London is always busy. Yes. So so, so that's what they are having right now. Uh, understand. It's kind of a, a, a panic mode. Absolutely. Understandably so. Uh, Jyoti, thanks for the moment. We'll, of course, touch base with you uh, throughout the next uh, hour or so to get a sense of what's happening in the city from a resident of London uh, itself. Uh, uh, but on your screens, those latest pictures that are coming in of the scene uh, where this uh, explosion has taken place uh, and also of uh, the police vehicles, the fire brigade vehicles, the ambulances that have now reached the spot. The uh, pictures on your screens coming live from London, the left uh, hand pictures coming live from London, uh, outside the Parsons Green Station. This, as we were pointing out, is, is this district line uh, of the London underground. And uh, what we now know is that several people have been injured in this explosion. Some people are saying that this explosion has sent a fireball flying down the carriage. But this is, uh, uh, this is a, a passenger's reaction on what he or she saw in the minutes after 
this explosion. Some commuters are said to have jumped off the train to safety because they were terrified when this explosion uh, took place. Because of the number of attacks that London has seen that uh, uh, have recently taken place across France and Spain, it's understandable that people are uh, tense, people are in panic uh, mode. Uh, several people have facial burns, uh, is what we now understand. People have fled in panic. Uh, this is the uh, pictures coming in from the district line that, uh, that show a burning plastic bucket stashed in a little carrier bag. Little is one of those uh, 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 chain departmental stores uh, that uh, function right across um, London and the UK. And this was in a little carrier bag which is said to have exposed, uh, exploded and sent a fireball down the carriage. Uh, the photo of that uh, flaming white bucket was taken just after it exploded. It shows a number of wires, as I was also mentioning, for protruding out from the top and onto the carriage floor of the train. But police have not yet confirmed if it was a bomb. Let's just repeat that again. Police have not yet confirmed that it was a bomb or whether it was a bomb because Metropolitan Police are tweeting that they would like to have accurate information that they uh, then share with the public in London. Uh, the latest tweet from Metropolitan Police now says that the police were called at 8.20 a.m. and that officers attended with the fire brigade as well as ambulance. Uh, Rishabh Gulati back on the phone line with us. Rishabh, any more details? Aranya, just, uh, just to pick on this, this is the photograph, right? Uh, when we were referring to, I'm going to ask my producer just to go full frame on this for a second. Uh, we are, we, we go, we're going to stay live on this, but I just want to explain something. This is the photograph. You can see the flames that are still coming out of this, of this uh, plastic bucket over here. It's a white plastic bucket. As you were pointing out, it's in a little carrier bag. Little is a, is a German supermarket chain that operates uh, in, in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, they have their plastic carrier bag. So there's a white bucket inside a plastic carrier bag. It's obvious that there is some cloth material here mm. that is here. You can see the flames licking from the top. So this is right at the after the aftermath of the explosion. You can still see that the, this entire uh, uh, entire plastic bucket from inside it is it is charred. Obviously, the the bag is exploded in some fashion that the plastic around it is torn. There are some remnant plastic pieces lying on the side now with with these red bands on them. I don't know if these are indeed wires, as we were discussing a bit earlier, or this is uh, melted plastic. Uh, this, of course, uh, is somebody's abandoned uh, uh, a purse which has been dumped on the spot of somebody who was standing here. So this is very much at the entry of one of the train carriages. We understand the last train carriage. Uh, and this is what has blown up. Now, subsequently, after the explosion, this is what's happened. This is the train uh, that was parked uh, on the spot. You can see the doors open and the fire rescue team, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, then going inside. And this is the aftermath over here. But it all boils down to this as we're going to split these shots once again with the live visuals that are coming on your screens. Uh, it is this uh, plastic uh, container. We don't know what was the content of the container, but what is apparent from this photograph, and I just want to go with what is patently obvious uh, in this, Ananya, is that obviously it is on fire. So something has exploded. Obviously the lid has come off. Obviously there are some parts of the plastic have gotten charred and melted. But the plastic container itself has remained intact. Yes, yes. Uh, there is no charring on the seats around it. There is no charring on the ground. There is no charring on the door. So the intensity of the explosion obviously has been extremely, extremely limited that the container itself has survived. Now whether this container has survived because a larger explosion did not happen or indeed this was some hazardous material, uh, perhaps inflammable material that was being carried in the container uh, and uh, which, which uh, ignited at this point of time, we just don't know Ananya. Right, of course, uh, but you know, this picture makes a lot of things clear, doesn't it, Risha? Because you yeah. can make out the uh, how powerful the explosion was and what possibly would be the impact. And you can understand why people were terrified because of what's been happening across UK and across Europe over the past few months. Uh, some reports also suggesting, Rishabh, that people actually jumped off uh, uh, the train uh, as soon as it was possible because they were terrified uh, when no, this I, explosion I can well happened. imagine because uh, these uh, trains are equipped, the, the, the doors are equipped with emergency handles. Yes. So you can open the doors, uh, which causes the train to stop automatically. Uh, there are uh, there are the central windows of the train hmm. are meant to be for emergency exits. You can shatter those windows. But from what we are seeing uh, of the train itself, the doors have opened. And you can tell that some of the doors are closed. 
and some of the doors are open, which means that they have been manually, forcefully opened. Hmm. Uh, otherwise, all the doors, as you know, in the Ladno Metro, open together. So the fact that some of the doors are open, which means that somebody's manually, forcefully opened them while several of the doors remain closed. Uh, but what is patently obvious, and I'm just zoomed out of this image a little bit, uh, that a lot of bags, abandoned bags, there is a cap here, uh, a sort of a mini, mini clutch kind of bag which is abandoned here, a larger bag uh, abandoned here, somebody's rucksack is abandoned here, and of course this is where, uh, this is what is currently on fire. So this is what has, a photograph which has been taken obviously moments after the blast, but again Ananya, you can see the flames licking from the top, you can see the glow of the flames, but the plastic container itself hasn't really exploded, it has remained intact. Uh, it is charred, the cloth which is stuffed inside this container, and it seems to be a blue cloth, this is, uh, it seems to be clothing, uh, is on fire. But uh, the, the seat which is right next to it uh, hasn't uh, gotten charged, and that itself tells the story that if indeed, uh, imagine how crowded this train is. You're literally talking about people standing on top of this container. Uh, and if it had exploded at that point of time and flames were licking out, you can well imagine that people who are literally, because the trains are so crowded, mm. uh, anybody who's traveled in, 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 in metros and locals in Delhi also will be familiar with them, that the train often gets so crowded that people are standing on top of each other. And even if a small explosion had taken place, the people who were immediately around this would have ha suffered some kind of injuries. We've been, we've been told they are facial burns. And we've been also been discussing that the other injuries that have taken place have mostly been because of the stampede to get away from the spot. Absolutely, Rishabh. Uh, just stay with us because... Mostly been because of the stampede to get away from the spot. Absolutely, Rishabh. Uh, just stay with us because uh, we can now uh, cut live... Uh, uh, I believe in just a, just a bit we will be cutting live to some pictures that are coming in from London. But also now joining us from London is Jyoti uh, Bhattacharya. He's been speaking to us uh, 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 since news of this explosion came in and is a London resident. Uh, Jyoti, which part of London are you in right now? And what are you picking up from your friends uh, who are uh, uh, spread across the city? Okay, I live in Brentford, which mm -hmm. is uh, on, on, on the western side of uh, London. It's on the zone four, and uh, this happened on the on the southwest part of London. So I'm, I'm currently back, uh, in that area, and there's a whole bunch of panic out here amongst a lot of people. Uh, people who are going to the office, they were uh, they were very very panicked, especially people who are going on the Hammersmith side, which is mm -hmm. like barely about like five miles from from where I live. So uh, but there are a lot of panic out here. People are, 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 are clueless that what actually happened. They all heard is uh, some uh, some blast. So they do not know whether it's a bomb blast or it's a something uh, but something else. Uh, what what I've heard is that like to a friend of mine, and he also heard from the word of mouth that there had been some some open bag kept on the on the rear side of a train, with uh, with which the explosion happened. Uh, I, I, and I, I'm yet to look uh, look into all the details, but I've heard that it happened from a from a bag, uh, some explosive. Yes. Have been carried in a bag. You, you are right, Jyoti, because you know we've got some pictures online now of that bag itself. It seems to be a plastic bucket with some kind of explosive inside it, and that bucket itself was inside a little bag. Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, so clearly there was something inside a bag. But if you if if, if uh, you look at those pictures now, uh, uh, we can make out that there isn't too much damage done to the bucket itself or to the seats right mm -hmm. next to the bag. But then if, you, if people were standing right next to that bag itself, it, they would have been seriously injured. Absolutely, absolutely. And also the, 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 the biggest part is that it's a, it's a very uh, um, a busy area uh, in, the, in the western part of London. Uh, um, now the, the, the tube station has been all cordoned off and, and uh, people have been evacuated. Uh, so all the line, the district lines uh, in that area have been called off for the time being, and police and, and fire, fire people, for fire team, they are still mm -hmm. investigating mm -hmm. what actually happened. So, so the normal commuters, they do not have any clue. So, so we are just hearing some rumors or maybe word of mouth what is what has happened. But as far as I know, some of my friends who who travel in that area, they are all safe, but they are in very very panic mode. Uh, it's understandable. In fact, uh, just to point your attention to the. Uh, uh, to the news that's coming in from the London Fire Brigade, which says that we have a number of resources and specialist officers in attendance at the incident at Parsons Green Tube Station. And, uh, along with it, a photo, of course, of the number of officers who are waiting outside Parsons Green. Many, of, of course, would be inside and attending to the incident as well. So reassuring words coming in, although uh, not many more details being shared by either the police, the fire brigade, or the ambulance service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Uh, 
Uh, can you hear me, Jyoti? Yeah, can you repeat the question? Uh, yes, I, I, yes. Uh, I, I was just saying that there's no uh, official confirmation of what exactly happened, although there are, there are reassuring words from all these services, the London Ambulance Service, the Fire Brigade, as well as the Metropolitan Police. Exactly. That's correct. So, so nothing is official yet, uh, except for the fact that people are panicked. But uh, but what actually happened was the reason behind the explosion, whether it's a, it's a terrorist or it's a mistake or, or something, nothing has been confirmed yet by the police. So they're still investigating, and that's the reason they have cordoned off the place uh, to do a further investigation. Uh, uh, Jyoti, uh, just take us through what kind of security checks do people go through, passengers go through, before boarding a London underground? Are there any metal detectors at all? Do you, do you go through any security? security checks because across India, uh, wherever you go, you go to malls, you go to cinema halls, you go take a public transport like a train or an, a, a plane or a metro, you'll have to go through those security checks. Absolutely. Here, there's nothing like that because it's, it's impossible to do those kind of security check in a busy day. So when we travel on the trains on a very peak hour, let's say like 8.30 in the morning or 9 o'clock in the morning when it's full rush, there aren't any, any security, nothing. So you can have thousands and thousands of people all at the same time in the same area, especially in the Waterloo area. Mm -hmm. You can have millions of people every day. So there's no aperture, there's no uh, metal detector, nothing. But there are some surveillance cameras uh, and the police are always on their feet. But there's nothing that you can go through... Uh, on some uh, metal detector or some screening uh, areas uh, to, to detect anything. So it's a very panic thing because, you know, it's very vulnerable considering that, you know, London is, uh, is one of the most highly targeted areas for terrorism and all. So we are always very, very panicked when we, when all, whenever we go to uh, central London to, to travel for work and all. So, so it's, not, it's not a very, very safe place to be in, especially like when it's so vulnerable. So, uh, Jyoti, are you then saying that if anyone wishes to enter a, a London metro station with explosives or any kind of unsafe material, that person is actually going unchecked? Yeah, absolutely. If they go completely unchecked, there's nothing that stops them. So, so, so you know, people just, uh, just move freely. So, uh, unlike in, in India, in, let's say in Delhi, on Calcutta, we go to some of the, the metal detectors or some screening, but here the nothing is there. Uh, at the moment, do you do, do you get reports of traffic diversions across London uh, of, uh, of uh, underground services completely being stopped? Underground services on the uh, on the district line has been stopped uh, between uh, a few stations. And, and uh, all people have been asked to take a different route, either bus or a different uh, uh, queue, to, to go to their work or, or to the destination, because right now that that uh, that line is con completely been uh, cordoned off. Right. Uh, uh, we are now we now understand, Jyoti, that m many of those people who got injured in this incident were injured in a stampede that followed. Would you would you know anything about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's, that's what is expected because people do, are not clue, uh, they are clueless about what actually happened. Because of the, uh, the blast, people have started uh, uh, running like, you know, headless chicken and they started uh, uh, running around. And because of that, like a lot of stampede happened and, uh, and that's the reason why a lot of people got injured. So I don't think anybody got injured from the blast, but people got injured from panic and from running around. Uh, uh, would you know of how quick the uh, London police or the ambulance service were to respond? Oh, they are very, very quick. They're very, very quick and fast. So, so the moment these kind of incidents happen, they, they, they come over with a the helicopter, they work with the ambulance, so they're very, very fast on this one. So on those things, they never compromise with the security. The only problem, as I mentioned, is that we do not have any screening, no, not any, uh, any, uh, any you know, metal detectors to, uh, to screen each and every uh, person. But, uh, but I, again, I understand it's not possible in a city like London because it's so overcrowded and there's so many people that uh, they cannot do it uh, individually on the screening and, and, and rescue the people, who, whoever is commuting. Right. Uh, so London doesn't have that kind of screening that places across India have at the moment. If you go to an airport in India, if you go to a metro station in, the, in India, even if you go to the railway station in India, at least your luggage has to go through uh, a, a scanner. That doesn't happen anywhere in London. And as Jyoti is pointing out, uh, it's, it's a bit difficult to do or at least to begin doing that in a crowded city like London. So anybody who wishes to actually carry unsafe material uh, could actually just walk in. And that seems to have be what has happened. Somebody has carried explosives in a, a, a plastic bag uh, and a bucket right inside uh, a metro station. The word 
a bomb is not being used by any of the agencies. Let's just point out that the agencies are not yet calling it any sort of an attack or neither are they calling it any sort of a, a, a blast a, as well. They're just calling it an explosion, an incident rather. Incident is the word that they've been using officially so far, uh, including the Metropolitan Police uh, of uh, London. Uh, Jyoti, you, yeah, right, sorry. You, you were talking to us about your friends as well. Yeah, that's correct. There's one of my friends who, who works in uh, in Hammersmith area. So, so she was, she said that you know she because she was also traveling on the on the same route, and she was was one of those people who got panicked and was running uh, in, in stations because uh, because uh, because of this problem, everybody started running here and there, and they, and, and, and also it's a busy uh, time at 8:30 in the morning. It's a busy time, so. They were all uh, trying to reduce their destinations, but she was very, very panicked. When I spoke with her, she said that she's safe, but it's, uh, she went through a trauma. At, at any given point uh, uh, in the morning, Jyoti, uh, in any of those uh, London uh, tubes, how many people would you say uh, travel uh, at any given point? Say 200, 300, or even more than that? Oh my God, it's thousands. It's thousands. It's, it's overcrowded. See, but, uh, out here, the frequency of the trains are very, very fast. So, so in, a, in a minute or so, you get the you know, next train, especially on the rush hours. So, uh, and, and if you travel to central London on, on a rush hour, it's like it's completely packed. So you, you won't even get a place to stamp your feet. So, uh, and, and it happens with, with every, every coach, every train for every minute. So it, it's one of the busiest uh, places I've ever seen. And also like the places like London, Houston and, and uh, Waterloo, they're like in the crowd of the people. They, they have about like thousands and thousands of people every second. Especially on a rush hour, uh, it's 8:30 in the morning, which is a, the high peak. Uh, as I'm saying, I don't think it's a it's a terrorist attack or something. It may be a, somebody was carrying some explosions, but again, like these things should be stopped, uh, and, uh, and there should be more vigilance in, in London area to stop these kind of uh, carrying explosions. Because even if it's a mistake, one mistake can cause a multiple lives. Yes. Especially on a on a, on a point well hours. made. Point well made, Jyoti. About you're calling for more vigilance. Uh, absolutely uh, right in that. Uh, and you were saying that you yourself would have taken uh, uh, the London uh, tube to work today. It's just that Fridays you work from home. Absolutely. So usually I I travel in that area. So I I, I go to Waterloo uh, for, for from my place from Brentford. So it's uh, all all crowded. Every, every every so. But luckily on Fridays I work from home. So. So I was very, very panicked because a lot of my friends, they go to the office, a lot of my colleagues go to the office uh, on, on Friday. So I was just give, give, uh, calling each and every one of them to see whether they're safe or not. Uh, Jyoti, could, could you tell us about what the local media are reporting at this point in London, uh, whether they are reporting any injuries or any number of people who are injured? No, not at all. Because they, they, even I was watching the BBC uh, in my office. So they have not, uh, uh, sorry, my home, uh, I was watching the BBC. Even they do not have any uh, any, any report as, uh, as of now. So they are just speculating. Uh, and, and only the, when, when the police officially declares uh, with the news, they will be flashing them in their own respective news. But currently there is no, uh, there, no report as such from okay. the media. Okay, okay. Jyoti, uh, just request you to stay with us uh, uh, for a couple of minutes. We're just trying to cut across live to Sky News uh, uh, to get the latest reports. So it's being monitored uh, by the counter-terrorism police and security services, but still falling under the remit of the British Transport Police for now. It's worth pointing out it's only, um, well, exactly an hour and 20 minutes since this happened, and the response, obviously, from the emergency <laughs> services has been very swift. And as we saw from uh, some of these stills, you can see um, lots of uh, armed police officers uh, there as well at the moment. Um, seeing those first aerial shots now um, of the tube station of a district line tube train uh, surrounded by what looks like uh, fire brigade officers and indeed passengers being safely uh, evacuated from the, the rear end of that train. In fact, some distance from the platform itself being safely walked back towards where you see that bridge and the road underneath that being the station uh, itself. Um, lots of reports from witnesses uh, describing flames engulfing one carriage um, and as we've been saying all morning um, accounts of a, of a stampede of people being trampled, people um, crying, uh, other people having scratches uh, and cuts um, from the desperation of people trying to get away from this unknown um, incident which happened on board one of the rear um, carriages of that underground train earlier this morning.
Uh, let's talk to Melanie Hayside, who I think is on the line. Uh, what did you see, Melanie? Where were you when this happened? Hi, yes, good morning. Um, I was just uh, leaving. I've been to the gym class this morning on Fulham Road, which is just on the corner next to Parsons Green. It's like a two-minute walk. Um, and I was taking the district line because I work in Victoria. And I just was about to open the door to leave the studio. And then all of a sudden, SWAT cars completely stormed and blocked the street. And police jumped out um, with, their, with their armor and were telling people to move, to move. And so I was inside with a group of other people, and we weren't really sure what to do. Um, and as you could see, looking out on the street, Fulham's quite a residential area. So at this time of morning, it was just school, school children and you know people going to work. So we stood in there for about two minutes, kind of thinking, oh, what do we do? Um, and then went out to ask a police officer what should happen and were told to just get out of the area as soon as possible. So it was definitely a panic and it was quite, I'm still a bit shaky from it, um, but we were all just moved really fast. No one was sure what to do, um, but everyone was just following the crowd and obviously thinking, um, where should we go? And so it challenges, like mm -hmm. in Fulham, there are three sort of main streets, so it's hard to kind of leave Parsons Green area because that's the focal point of Fulham. So yeah, definitely scary and also just, you, know, you wouldn't think of, this area, you know, being attacked until it until it does. Yeah, I mean, it, as you're being as you were being moved away, Melanie, did, did you get to talk to anyone who'd been closer to the scene, who'd uh, who'd actually been on the train at all? Did anyone be able yeah, to give so you any more information? Was, yeah, so I walked um, to Fulham Borough Station. I was trying to see if I could get a bus into work or an Uber, but that was going to be impossible. Um, and I stood next to a man who'd been on the train behind it, um, and he just said, "Yeah, there was some type of like big spark," and he just got off and ran and came, like went <laughs> to like a safe place as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, in the area, it's super busy at that time of morning. Um, and when we tried to get trains, or, sorry, buses into central London, there were just people everywhere. And for 45 minutes still afterwards, there were just police um, storming into the area. And yeah, it's quite, it's quite frightening. Yeah, I bet. Melanie, thank you. Um, our senior correspondent, Ian Woods, uh, is just arriving at the scene. Ian? Yeah, the cordon that the police have set up is, uh, is increasing in its uh, dimensions. It's uh, pushed back now, so I'm at the junction of uh, Darlan Road and uh, Fulham Road, which is uh, still several hundred yards away from the London Underground Station. So there are you know, lots of police activity, obviously, at the scene. There's a helicopter overhead, uh, and the public are gradually being pushed back. I can still see people who are within the cordon zone who are now being moved out by the police. So this is something which has obviously just been established and moved further back in the last few minutes, and they're still trying to evacuate the wider area uh, from, uh, from where people were, uh, were initially uh, panicked and coming out of the train station. You'll have heard the reports by now of uh, an explosion and... Uh, we're just moving back now because there are more police vehicles uh, arriving in the area and the police are trying to uh, clear a path for them to, uh, to get through. But uh, obviously lots of reports of some kind of explosion, some facial injuries and other injuries to people who were uh, close to the scene of that uh, explosion. And uh, also injuries reported from people in the sheer panic to get out of the underground station. Now, we, we talk about it being the London Underground, but uh, Parsons Green is an overground station. So... Uh, the, the, there are places uh, further around the corner where I understand that you can still see uh, the train station stopped uh, where it uh, pulled into the station. But uh, where the cordon has now been established, we've been moved back beyond that point. Uh, so uh, we are now actually being held at the uh, junction of the uh, where the fire brigade in Fulham have their, their headquarters. Uh, right, the, uh, so they were very, very quickly on the scene because uh, they are so close to where Parsons Green Station is. Well, we're just looking at, at some of the, uh, the aerial shots, Ian, and... Um what looks like civilians, passengers, being taken out of the, from the driver's um, cab, or of, well, I don't know what, which direction the train was going in from, from this angle, but c yeah, coming out of a driver's cabin through the window um, there. So, I mean, clearly this, is, this procedure is taking some time. This is, what, an hour and a half since it happened. Yeah, I mean, th these things obviously do take time to, to, to get to some semblance of order, because clearly when... Uh, something like this happens for the first uh, 30, 40 minutes. It's just a scene of chaos, and uh, the emergency services are arriving at the scene and trying to establish uh, what the situation is, uh, what the nature of the threat is, what the nature of people's injuries are. And uh, once that is dealt with, once that immediate priority of dealing with uh, any casualties is dealt with, then comes the investigation and whether or not uh, there are still uh, possible further dangers to the public. 
and whether a cordon needs to be established in the area to protect people, as whether uh, as well as simply simply setting up a um, a sterile secure zone for the uh, police to operate and begin their uh, their investigations of what actually happened. Yeah, and just uh, as you talk, in just looking at people being brought across the tracks and. Um you know, in terms of in terms of logistics for uh, transport for London for London Underground, I mean, obviously that's um, de-electrifying the tracks, turning the power off. All that is actually a pretty major operation in itself, and it's affecting la large swathes of the of the district line, which will add to the uh, the, the chaos in that part of London. And, and what can you tell us about uh, what is actually happening in terms of, of areas being shut down and, and perhaps that cordon being widened in? Yeah, well, I can only report uh, where I have been at the moment. I mean, clearly the, the cordon stretches further and further out. Uh, that's uh, taken in quite a number of streets that I don't have uh, uh, visual access to. But as I say, I'm on the Fulham Road at the moment. Uh, initially, we got a little bit closer, but then the cordon was pushed back to Darlin Road, uh, and that is where uh, the public are being held at this point. Um, there are buses which were on their normal journeys uh, through this area, which have just been now abandoned in the middle of the... Uh, sterile zone that the, uh, the police have stretched their tape across, but there are still vehicles uh, trapped within there where they have been abandoned, where the police have simply come along and said, okay, you're going to need to you know, stop here. You can't go any further. We're securing this entire area. So as well as uh, police vehicles in the road, there are uh, various abandoned uh, buses, uh, the number 424, the number 14, all just sort of sitting here. And uh, uh, that will be the situation around here for, for, for several hundred yards. Uh, it's a residential area as well, so there's lots side streets which have to be closed off. I've been down several of those and all of them have now had the tape uh, across them and uh, uh, a lot of people are going to be affected by this because a lot of the a lot of people live within this secure zone and they won't be able to get access to their houses for a while. I mean Ian you've you've covered many things of this nature before I mean you can you have some expectation of, of, of all the processes that will be going on in, in the minds of, of the emergency services in terms of the investigation here don't you? Those latest pictures coming in, by and large, the situation seems to be under control and the police, ambulance and fire service at the spot.